The chair recognizes the honorable the member for Bonavista. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's an honor to stand here today and give an uh, address and reply to the speech from the throne, which was given uh, a week ago today. First of all, I'd like to thank his honor, uh, uh, Frank F. Fagan, who, uh, who delivered that great speech. And uh, there's quite a bit good in this document. And I've got a lot of things highlighted, and I've got a lot of notes made here today. So I'm going to get to, to that. But certainly the throne speech, being my second, is always a big deal. Uh, the pomp and circumstance that surrounds the throne speech. Uh, apparently there's a, oh, getting a bit of feedback, I think, Mr. Speaker, on, uh, from what I'm saying. So I asked the member I'll take my cell phone. Uh, sorry, what I was saying, there's a lot of pomp and circumstance around the speech from the throne. And it's always a, it's always a nice occasion. You know, I get to dress up, I put on my medals as uh, any such time I'm in the presence of the Lieutenant Governor. Also, it's nice to see some of my Navy colleagues who are once uh, aide de camp to the Lieutenant Governor, the other is the commanding officer uh, for CFS St. John, so it's always good to touch base with them and have a quick chat. Um, talking about the throne speech, it covered quite a bit that affects the District of Bonavista, and I'm going to get to that shortly. But I want to make a couple uh, general announcements here. And I don't know if people have been looking at social media over the last couple of days, but there's been quite a few polar bear sightings uh, in my district, one of which is in Melrose today. It went up to some people's house. Uh, it actually ran the base pads uh, of the old uh, Melrose ball field. But what I say to people is be very cautious with the polar bear. I was talking to uh, wildlife officials today, so they're on their way down, and they're hopefully going to have a trap set up for the end of the day. So. Just keep your safety, and they're following all sightings on the peninsula. Uh, I also want to highlight something that the member from uh, Cartwright, Lance and Clare just, uh, just highlighted. Is that this enhanced seniors benefit and the income, Newfoundland Labrador income supplement will be released tomorrow. So if you're wondering why, wow, my GST check is really big. Why is that? That's because we put extra money into that, going towards seniors and low income people. Yeah. So I want to talk about some good things that are going on. I want to talk about some good things. Now, the third party got up week before last during interim supply and talked about how you shouldn't be talking about good things, like Brad Gushu winning the Briar. I think that is absolutely ridiculous. All you hear from that crowd over there is doom and gloom, and I think the Minister of Health and Community uh, Services aptly named them that. So what I'd like to do uh, right off the bat is give recognition to the Bonavista Pee Wee Cabots. They are the regional finalist for Newfoundland and Labrador for the Good Deeds Cup. So if you go to Chevrolet Good Deeds Cup, get in a vote for them. They're currently in seventh place. We want to get them up beating the Cape Britainers who are well ahead. So we got to get, get behind these, uh, these young players who are doing some good things in the community and actually supporting our food bank. And that's why they got nominated. I want to talk about Team Gushu, who are currently 5-0 and at the, National, or at the World Championship. Uh, it was an honor to see them down at the Briar, but it's even more exciting to see them uh, competing so greatly on the world stage. Uh, Munn Curling Team needs to get some recognition as well for winning the U Sports Championship in curling. And what can I say about our Special Olympians, who did us so proud uh, just recently in the Winter World Game. So it's great to see, and, and kudos to you guys. And I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about uh, my friend, the member for Bell or Provincia West Bellevue, and Caitlin Osmond, who won silver medal this past weekend at the World Championships. And what else can I say but come from away? It's tearing up Broadway, and all these things are good news stories here in Newfoundland and Labrador. And a third party doesn't want to, us to recognize good things that are going on in this province. It's a shame. They couldn't, they couldn't close the bait quick enough on interim supply, but they're yet to get up to speak on this address and reply. The cat must have the Now, I get a comment on the leader of the opposition. He got up immediately after the throne speech and went on a revisionist history of their 12 years in government. He's worried about his legacy so much. He's got so much revisionist history that he takes no responsibility for the financial state we're in. 
His head is in the sand. I tell you, Mr. Speaker, WrestleMania was on Sunday. And, Wrestle, and WrestleMania is more believable than anything that comes out of the mouth on the PC opposition. And no, it's not real. <laughs> one, one good piece of legislation that we brought forward in the fall was Bill 65, which is an act respecting the tabling of public accounts. So we call that the Davis 15 Bill. So the reason why we call it the Davis 15 Bill is because they came out with their Order, budget please. that said there was going to be a deficit for $1.1 billion, and it turned up being double to $2.2 billion. You can't plan a campaign around that. The public going into an election should be aware of the public coffers and what's there. So he also said the backbenchers on the other side should get up and stand up against their own government. Well, I find that a bit funny coming from that member because when Bill 29 was brought forward, none of them, none of them got up and stood up against that. Bill 29. When Muskrat Falls was debated, none of them got up to say, no, this is wrong. We were hoodwinked. Well, sorry, no time with the opposition or the official opposition. And finally, Mr. Speaker, when they got up and talked about the Phantom Fisheries Fund of $280 million that they got from the feds, none of them got up and talked about talked about, no, this is not true, we didn't sign an agreement. The former fisheries minister even put a letter into the telegram that was totally false. I had to write a letter, which came in, was in there last Thursday, that clarified things. So thank you, thanks that it's unbelievable how to get on and pretend that the previous 12 years didn't happen. But getting back to the district of Bonavista, because I've already spent too much time talking about that crowd. I'm going to get back to the good news again. So, getting back to the speech from the throne, right off the bat, there was a reference to John Cabot and the importance of the cod fishery. John, as you're all aware, John Cabot landed in Bonavista, and the, the cod fishery has been a vital part of the district of Bonavista ever since. This year, we marked the 25th anniversary of the Cod Moratorium, Mr. Speaker. That immediately sent 30,000 people out of work. And my hometown of Catalina was one of, the, one of the worst hit. The Port Union plant employed roughly 14, 000, or excuse me, 1,400 people year round, and they were automatically thrown out of work. And we're still feeling the effects from that, Mr. Speaker. Businesses closed down, people moved away, and now we're we're starting to see a boom on the Bonavista Peninsula. We're actually a growth center, so that talks about some great things that are going on. And the speech from the throne talks quite a bit about that. Our way forward, I got several sticky tabs here, and I might get to read some of this out that are going to be beneficial to the District of Bonavista, Mr. Chair or Mr. Speaker. So, also, Roots Ranch and Roars was referenced. That is the premier food festival in the province. It is world, it's becoming world renowned. You're getting chefs from all over Canada, US, other parts of the world. You're also getting people come from everywhere to come to Elliston to take part in this festival. And I've had the pleasure of attending two year, uh, this past year and the year prior, and it's second to none, and I encourage uh, I encourage my colleagues to come out in September and enjoy the three-day festival. You will certainly enjoy yourself, and it's, uh, it's been a boom to our economy and has certainly put us on the map. So what came out of the throne streets? One of the things that struck me right away is we're building towards a sustainable future. Building towards a sustainable future. And from what I've seen from the throne speech, what I've seen from the way forward, is that the District of Bonavista will be front and center in building that sustainable future. As I mentioned, we've seen new businesses open up over the last two years. 
minister, the Minister of Tourism, Culture, Industry and Innovation has been there several times. He sees the potential. He spoke to the Chamber of Commerce last year. He sees the value in the District of Bonavista when it comes to business, tourism, culture, especially innovation and industry. You hit all of them on the head. So there's several things that were highlighted in the throne speech and the way forward. Because you can't forget about the way forward. They often say you guys haven't got a plan, and I challenged them to pick up a document or pick up the document. I don't think they have. My what do you say? I think there's seventy odd actions in it, and over half would certainly relate to the district of Bonavista, Mr. Mr. Speaker. So Page six of the way for us is we have to do better with less. When they were out spending like drunken sailors with $25 billion in all revenues, and we can't forget the $4 billion in lost tax revenue that they gave up, $29 billion, Mr. Speaker. When they were out spending like drunken sailors, not looking at any outcomes on anything, we have to face their poor planning. One of the members said, our overspending is kind of on us. At least someone over there admits it. So we need a paradigm shift in how we do things as government. And this is where we get for do more with less. We need to focus on outcomes, Mr. Speaker. We can't throw money at something and not measure the outcome. How do we know whether or not we're getting value for our money if we don't measure outcomes. For example, education, healthcare. They've thrown money at that year after year and never did once measure outcome. We have a Minister of Education and a Minister of Health and Community Services who are out looking at educational outcomes and healthcare outcomes. We want to use the money correctly. We so We've developed a, excuse me, a report card came out recently, and we thought we did pretty good on that, and it's realizing our potential. So for a stronger economic foundation, here's what we plan on doing, Mr. Speaker. Establish a cabinet committee on jobs. Now imagine, not rely on just oil or one industry. We want to, our cabinet's actually going to focus on jobs and diversification. Increase the number of social enterprises in Newfoundland Labrador. Introduce status of the artist act. Release the cultural plan. Improve the sense of, sense of arrival for travelers to Newfoundland Labrador. Increase water area for aquaculture to 50,000 metric tons for salmon and uh, almost 11,000 for mussels. Increase timber allocations and harvest levels by 20% in 2020. And I'm gonna to get to some of these things uh, hopefully, I'm probably going to run out of time, so I'll get to it in my, my response to the budget, because a lot of what we're seeing there is hopefully going to be coming out of our budget as well, because everything's based on the way forward. So we're incorporate women's employment plan on infrastructure projects. Offer online block training for select <laughs> trades. I really like that one. It keeps, it keeps our tradespeople in the workforce while they're still getting going and writing their exam for their journeyman tickets. I think that's a huge uh, move forward. We're going to make crown lands more accessible to stimulate the economy, agriculture, support tourism industry by doubling resident and non-resident spending, uh, establish a fisheries advisory council, appoint a chair, which was done a couple of weeks ago. And one of the biggest things that we did was the Public Procurement Act that we brought forward in the fall. And I think that's going to change things, where instead of going to the lowest bidder, where you're going to know, where you know there's going to be a risings come up and, and you end up spending more in the long run, what this public procurement does is it gives you more money for value. So it might not necessarily be the lowest bidder, but you're going to get more value for your, your buck. I talked about ground fish and fishery in a, in a speech a couple of weeks ago, Mr. Speaker, but I, I feel it that important, important that I, I should mention again. So on page 11 of the throne speech, we are is highlighted return to ground fish. And it said, a return to ground fish is the centerpiece of our economic development approach. When I heard that, Mr. Speaker, it was music to my ears. 
Right now, we've seen the struggles that we have in the shrimp and crab industries, and it's going to be a tough year. <laughs> we, we know that, and I, I commend the work of uh, the Minister of Fisheries and Land Resources. He's there talking to the federal government. We need a we need an approach on that, I think, that doesn't make the drastic cuts such were made recently. But we also have an action plan. So the Fisheries Advisory Council, I've already talked about, but we're going to have an action plan on harvesting, processing, and marketing. And the $100 million of the uh, Federal Fisheries Fund that we just received are going to go to a long way into that. Also, talking about the fishery, one of the biggest complaints I heard from fishermen last year, last fall, was the fact that they couldn't get their codfish to market in time. So you saw a lot of people stop fishing into November and December, when if they had a place to process it, they could have kept going and going and going. Started off with 5,000 pounds, which was their quota, and ended up with 2,000 every week. And what that federal, excuse me, that what that uh, 100 million dollar fund can do is help processors innovate and adapt to our new or, not, or return back to the ground fishery, and give the fishermen a better option to sell their fish locally, and you get processing done locally as well, which does create jobs. We talked about aquaculture, which is action item. 2.17 in the uh, in the way forward, and I forgot to mention the return to ground fish is action 2.20. The reason why I'm actually saying the actions because the PC opposition likes to say we don't have a plan, but Mr. Speaker, I am talking about things with actually actions actions uh, attached to them. So agriculture, another important industry in the district of Bonavista. Vista. So we're going to see new developments through Crown Lands, double the amount of land that is actually given to our farmers. <coughs> we're going to see double our food security by 2022. Currently we have 10% of our own food produced here in the province. We are going to double that, Mr. Uh, Speaker. And also, one thing that I really liked coming out of uh, the speech from the throne was the development of curriculum for junior and high school students. Getting young people into the classroom, learning about our farming industry will certainly get us on the right path to growing our industry and getting more young farmers in, in, uh, in that sector. I've got roughly two minutes left, so I'm not, obviously not going to get to everything. But uh, tourism, you can't say the District of Bonavista Vista without thinking tourism and culture. We, I often call it every time I speak, the historic district of Bonavista. It's a destination, tourism here in Newfoundland, Labrador, is a destination of choice. And we've had a remarkable tourism season on the district of Bonavista, in the district of Bonavista last year. And looking at the, uh, the numbers for this year, bookings are going through the roof. Uh, operators are very excited about the year. Even right now, we're seeing from out of a province license plates and uh, some from the United States, so it's a, it's a good time. So we've got 500,000 visitors, 8,000 people employed, we have $1 billion of spending. We want to increase that spending by $1.6 billion by 2020, three short years from now. That's $600 million, Mr. Speaker, and that will have a positive effect in the District of Bonavista. Vista. That is actually action item 2.12. We want to give people a sense of arrival. So when they come to our airport, when they go to Port of Basque or Argentia, we want to point them in the right direction. We want to make them feel welcome. So we're focusing on getting them here and giving them experience right off the bat so they know where to go. That's action item 2.13. Also with tourism and culture, we are supporting culture through the status of the arts legislation, and I look forward to that one coming forward, because I'll certainly say a few words on that, because the culture industry goes hand in hand along with the tourism industry, and now that's action 2.10. Uh, so I've just got through the three, made, three of my four biggest industries, the fishery, 
agriculture and tourism. And I didn't even have time to touch, Order, please. touch forestry and others. So thank you for the Order, time. Please.